Now please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now please pause for the 30 seconds of silence. Good morning, Grizzlies. I'm Emma. I'm Dylan. And I'm Kara with GNN, your Grizzly News Network. Today is Tuesday, March 19, 2024. This week starts the week with the new cell phone pouches. Every teacher has given a set of non-locking, signal-blocking pouches to use with their students in the classroom. The expectation is for every teacher to have, to have you put your cell phone in the pouch at the beginning of the period to allow for a more engaged class. Because the bags are signal-blocking, if you do not put your phone on airplane mode, your phone will drain battery quicker as it would be searching for a signal. It also means you will not get any notifications, but your parents or family can reach out to the school if there is a need to get a hold of you. Students will be able to access devices during any emergency or with teacher permission for a specific instruct instructional need and during nutritional breaks. And during class time, if a teacher sees or hears your phone or headphones, the phones will be taken and a parent will have to come pick it up from the school. Starting today, if you are seen or heard using your phone after students are told to put it in the bag, you will be escorted to your house office. Hey Emma, what clubs are going on today? We have a few clubs meeting today. Come join Comic Book Club. They are meeting in room 220, where they discuss comics and appreciate the art form. National Honor Society meets in room 200 every other week. Chess Club meets today in room 226. Come check out your chess clothes. Remember, all clubs start after school at 2.01 p.m. Grizzlies, her club is holding a shelter drive. The items they will accept are baby supplies, adult and children's clothes, canned food, and hygiene products. You can donate at room 812, 813, and 920, or at any her club donation box. The drive will end March 28th, so go help them out. A big congratulations to one of our senior dancers. Shay Styles has been selected as this year's CCSD Dance Scholarship recipient of $500. She will be recognized on stage at the beginning of the Dance Festival Showcase on March 21st, which is this Thursday night. Of all the students entered in the festival, they choose one student based off of an essay. Congrats, Shay! As we kick off the last quarter of the school year, the temptation to make a break may have some kids using ChatGPT more. The new AI is challenging the way schools deal with authentic work and making them adjust their assignments. John, Randy, and Martin look at how Spring Valley is dealing with it. It's a new era in education as more and more people are starting to use ChatGPT, a text generation tool that writes human sounding answers but with no human involved. As ChatGPT gets better and better with time, students are finding themselves wanting to use a shortcut. You know, I hate to admit it, but I have actually started to, to use ChatGBT with some of my history assignments because sometimes I'm having trouble like coming up with talking points for my essays, but I'm not copying it word for word, so it's not cheating. I think it's fine to use as long as you're not like abusing it or anything. Like, like I said earlier, just using it for like general reference is, I think, best. While students may be tempted to use the program as a shortcut, teachers have been trying to find ways to adapt and use ChatGBT as a tool. And I think it comes down to the fact of education needs to react to it, right? And kids are going to look for the easiest path um, when it comes to assignments and everything like that. So we in education need to ask questions of what are we actually doing to provide um, curriculum that actually goes around ChatGPT. You can try to block it as much as possible, but you're just fighting a losing battle because it is going to become part of our future. Since its launch in 2021, ChatGPT has become subject to controversy when it comes to how it should be used. In an interview with the New York Times, Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, has noted its usage in education, saying that days after the release of ChatGPT, school districts were falling all over themselves to ban it. But the thing that happened after that, quickly, was school districts and teachers saying, we're encouraging our students to get really good at this tool because it's going to be a part of the way people live. However, some students hold a negative opinion of the tool. People don't really have to put in work. It's like, oh, let's go to ChatGPT. <laughs> it's not original, if you know what I mean. Like, it's not truly them. 
Me personally, I wouldn't use it, but I don't really care if other people do because it's just like, that's you. And while students may be privy to the tool, many adults are not. A common sense survey found that while 58% of students aged 12 to 18 have used ChatGPT, only 30% of parents have. So at the beginning of the year is when it's the hardest to try to figure it out when kids are using it. But as the year goes on and I'm more familiar with how people write, I can very much figure it out a lot easier. It could be a problem in the future where we have people that are professionals and they don't know the content that they need to know. Uh, if they use it as a tool to help them learn, uh, it could be very beneficial, it could help out a lot. Remember, if you are caught using AI, it could cost you the grade for the assignment because of academic dishonesty. Some senior news. Time is running out to make sure you are recognized on Senior Awards Night. You need to turn in all your college acceptances and scholarship awards, even if you turn them down. We want to recognize you for the honor. Upload one letter or email screenshot at, at a time. Scan the QR code for the link to the Google form, or look for your senior email. And speaking of awards and grad night, here is a look at important events. Mark your calendars. Senior Sunset will be on April 24th. Then the next night will be Senior Awards from 6 to 8 p.m. Prom is scheduled for April 27th from 7 to 10 p.m. Then grad night will be Friday, May 17th, all leading to graduation Wednesday, May 22nd at 3 p.m. at the Thomas and Mack Center. The final countdown is on seniors. And seniors, have you made sure you get a yearbook? The yearbook has been submitted for printing for this year, so it can be here in time for the end of the year. And time is running out to secure your book. The last day to buy online is April 5th, so make sure one is safe for you because they sell out each year. Go to jostens.com and reserve yours for $90. Hey Dylan, what's going on with sports this week? Well, sports will be back in action this week as well. Today, varsity Spring sports will be are finally underway. Here's John Durango about how 3:30 and JV will be away at Gorman at 3:30. Varsity baseball will be playing at home at 3:30 and JV away at Foothill at 3:30. Also on Tuesday, boys volleyball will be playing at home against Liberty with JV at 6, JV, varsity at 6, JV, and B team at 5. On Wednesday, track and field will be away at Doso at 4.30. On Thursday, varsity softball will be away at Chaparral at 3.30 and JV at home playing against Chaparral at 3.30. Varsity baseball will be playing at home at 3.30 and JV away at Rancho at 4.30. On Friday, Varsity Baseball will be playing at Durango at 4.30 and JV at home at 3.30. Boys Volleyball will be playing at home against Chaparral with Varsity at 6, JV, and B Team at 5. Make sure to get out there and support our athletes. Now is your chance to join Spring Valley's award-winning cheer team. Tryouts are coming up next month, April 2nd, 3rd, and 4th from 4 to 6 each night in our cafeteria. But before tryouts, you must get the packet of information from Mrs. Hamburger's room, 824. There is a required parent meeting on March 28th, and all the required papers are due March 29th. Follow their Insta account at spring underscore valley underscore cheer. Interested in playing girls soccer? Go stop by Portable 2 on March 20 for an interest meeting. They'll be going over intramurals, workouts, and more. Have any questions? Shoot an email to Coach Addington. Stay connected by following us on Instagram at SVHS Grizz Soccer. Hope to see you there. National sports news, it's time for March Madness. Yesterday, the NCAA tournament selection show will be held, and the 64 teams were decided to, put, to be put into the bracket. The first seeds include the defending champions, UConn, Houston, Purdue, and North Carolina. The tournament starts tomorrow with the 16th seeds facing each other. Every game channel varies, but most will be on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. Hey Nick, what's the weather looking like for the rest of the week? Huh. Thanks Super Sporty Dylan. What's up Grizzlies? It's your Wicked Weatherman back with another Wicked Weather Story. Today we'll have a high of 71 and a low of 49. Tomorrow we'll have a high of 76 and a low of 58. On Thursday however, we'll have a high of 77 and a low of 56 with partially cloudy things. On Friday, however, we'll have a high of 77 and a low of 57. Hey Grizzlies, are you into shoes or a fan of the infamous Travis Scott? Well, have I got a collaboration for you. The Air Jordan 1 Low OGs are gearing up for a highly anticipated collaboration with none other than Travis Scott. This partnership brings forth a fresh cannery colorway, inspired by Travis Scott's high school style. The vibrant blue and yellow hues pay homage to his roots, adding to personal touch and an iconic silhouette. The Air Jordan 1 Low OG's cannery boasts premium materials and craftsmanship.
ensuring both style and performance on and off the court. They are dropping this summer with the starting prices of $100 to $300. Be sure to get yours while limited shoes while supplies last. Now back to you at the desk. We hope you had a good spring break, Grizzlies, because we are now in the last quarter of the year. This week we have a full week of school, but next week we have Friday off and the following Monday for Easter. Only nine weeks to go, so if you don't have the best grades in the last quarter, now's your chance to improve them and round out for a good quarter grade. This was Emma, Dylan, Kiera, and Nick of the Grizzly, Grizzly News Network. Network. Have, have a terrific, terrific Tuesday, Tuesday Grizzlies! Grizzlies.